is going on, Cuse Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bleed Orange. My name is Lenny Cook, as always, and thank you for joining me. Today, we take a post-game look at the first game against North Carolina for Syracuse football in the 2020 season. And let me tell you, that was not how I'd like to start the season, but Syracuse football did show some hope this year. And this is, this is where I'm going to break down the key players in this matchup and what needed to happen for Syracuse to win and what happened for Syracuse to lose, breaking the key players for North Carolina. And guess what? That is where we're going to start, starting with North Carolina's Heisman candidate, QB, Sam Howell. Sam Howell had 295 passing yards just in that game. It was an outstanding, remarkable comeback from the terrible first half that North Carolina played. So they had 295 passing yards for Sam Howell. To put it into perspective, 300 yards is the most that a Buffalo Bills quarterback has scored since 1989. And when you look at that, Josh Allen just broke that record last Sunday against the Jets. And if you want to check out my Bills post game, it will be right after this video. But that is just putting into perspective how good Sam Howell is and what a Heisman quarterback this Sam Howell could be. Now, when we go into Michael Carter, we thought that Michael Carter would be go crushing us down the middle and Sam Howell's long ball would kill us. And Sam Howell's long ball did kill us in the second half. But we did shut down Michael Carter and we held him to 78 yards. And when you... Put, when you put that into perspective, you say, Landon, that's still an over a thousand yard year for Michael Carter. But when you really think about this, he had way over a thousand yards last year. This is another, another very good MVP ACC candidate. And let me tell you, this was a very good running back. And our defense played great until the end of the third quarter, through the fourth quarter to the end. Our defense just got tired, not enough conditioning, and that is what, that is because of our strength and conditioning coach. But he does have an excuse because they have not had long to prepare for this game, and it has been since uh, August 31st. It has been since August, 30, August 31st since they knew they were playing North Carolina, and their first practice was in late July. So they have not had much time to prepare and condition and do the things they need to do to prepare for football. But the Syracuse football team did show some hope, and this is where we get into our offense. Tommy DeVito had 112 yards. This was not very good at all. Tommy DeVito had a terrible year last year, did not play very well, and this year he just showed the same thing. Although we did lose Tristan Jackson, Alton Robinson, Kendall Coleman, and we still had five wins last year. Jamar Jordan, Jamar Jordan, the true freshman, the very good candidate coming into Syracuse University, and he did not show up to play, but he did have a few good plays, but we will get into that later. He had a total of 26 yards. 26 total yards for the true freshman, and that is not very good. That is not very good at all. Um, I think he will show some hope because he's a true freshman. Maybe in three three years, he'll be a very good, very good running back. Andre Sisco of the defense, he has played amazing. He was a named All-American preseason, preseason last, preseason SU player to be named an All-American was back in 2004, and it was it was very crazy to hear that. Andre had a pick, and no surprise to me, he has he has picked off the ball a ton of times, and that is a part that makes our defense great. I don't know what we would do without him. He had a pick and a great return in this game, one of Sam Howell's many turnovers. He had two picks in that game. Um, lost because of missed opportunities. We, I, if I went over all the missed opportunities, we'd be here for days and days. Tommy DeVito throws a wide open touchdown pass to one of our wide receivers, and it was not very good. Not very good at all. Um, that could have been a 
13 points. Since we scored, we lost 31 to 6. That could be one of 13 points. Now, another one. We had a punt return touchdown brought back to the house. And let me tell you, that was not a, a block in the back that needed to be hap that didn't that needed to be happen. We had the kicker, the last guy, and we had a blindside block by a player that was upset that we were down. I don't even know why he would do that. That was a cheap shot. And the Orange would be winning 21 to 6 right now. 21 to 7 right now. That's it. That's the first quarter, beginning of second quarter. We would have won this game, or at least lost by close. North Carolina did cover the spread by 20, did cover 22 and a half, which was very weird. I never thought in a million years that would happen. But Syracuse did show some life, and it was not the normal football game. Everybody should know that. The final was 31 to 6. And let me bring up one last thing. Taj Harris, our wide receiver, I couldn't help but notice that he was very whiny. He was very whiny during the game. DeVito threw him this bad pass. DeVito threw him this great pass, but it was to the sideline. I didn't like that. He, drops, he dropped a bunch of catches in that game. He wouldn't come in. He said, oh, he's throwing outside. You're staying on, he's staying on the outside of the line. So I do not like Tosh Harris's attitude coming into the first game. All right, guys, that is all I have for you today. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Bleed Orange. 31 to 6, the Orange go down 0 and 1. We will see you for the pit preview in a few days. Thank you very much, and I will see you guys.